students this is lecture number 39 and the title is we are going to study the most generalized m by n games. Now, as you know that we have first studied the simplest case that is the 2 by 2 n 2 by 2 game then we have studied by the m by 2 game and then by we have studied the 2 by n game. Now, this is the most generalized situation where we have a m by n game that is the payoff matrix is of the type a i j which is a m by n matrix. Now, we will study two methods for this kind of a scenario. The first one is called the algebraic method and the second one is the linear programming method. So, the first method that is the algebraic method is fairly simple and it uh, means that we are going to convert the problem into a set of equations and then determine the value of the uh, p i's and the q i's and the value of the game. So, this method can be used to determine the probability values by using the different strategies by the players a and b. However, this method might become quite lengthy when the number of strategies for both the players is very very large. So, that is the limitation of this method. So, look at this scenario suppose we have a game whose payoff matrix is given by the matrix a i j which is a m by n matrix and let p 1, p 2, p m and q 1, q 2, q n be the probabilities with which the players a and b adopt their mixed strategies a 1, a 2, a m and b 1, b 2, b n respectively. If v is the value of the game then the expected gain to the player a for this game when the player a uh, when the player b selects the strategies b 1, b 2, b n 1 by 1 is given by the left hand side of the simultaneous equations respectively. Now, since the player a is the gainer uh, player that is it is the uh, winning player uh, and uh, the player a expects at least v that is the value of the game. Therefore, we must have these conditions that is a 1 1 p 1 plus a 1 2 p 2 plus a 1 m p m should be greater than or equal to v and like this uh, we have uh, n number of equations the last one being a n 1 p 1 plus a n 2 p 2 plus a n m p m greater than or equal to v with the condition that p 1 plus p 2 plus p m should be equal to 1 and all the p i's should be greater than or equal to 0 for all i. Uh, since the player B is the loser player, see there are two players one is the A player and the uh, second one is the B player. So, we are assuming uh, for all such cases that player A is the winner player and player B is the loser player. So, since B is the loser player therefore, we must have the following conditions A 1 1 Q 1 plus A 1 2 Q 2 plus a 1 a n 1 q 1 less than or equal to v and similarly a 1 m q 1 a 2 m q 2 a n m q m less than or equal to v such that q 1 plus q 2 plus q n should be equal to 1 and q i's should all be greater than or equal to 0. Now, to get the values of p i's and q i's from these two sets of inequalities, they may be considered as exact equations and solved for the given unknowns. 
However, if the system of equations is inconsistent, then at least one of the inequalities must hold as strict inequality and in general the solution can be obtained only by trial and error method. So, let us hope that our system uh, is uh, satisfying uh, consistency. So, in order to understand this method, let us look at this example which says that in a game of matching coins with two players, suppose A wins one unit of value when there are two heads, wins nothing when there are two tails and loses 1 by 2 unit of value when there is one head and one tail. So, this is a simple two player game and we are required to determine the payoff matrix and the best strategies for each of the two players and the value of the game for the player A. So, first thing is we need to determine the payoff matrix. Now, the payoff matrix for the given matching coin game can be shown as in this table that is we have uh, two players A and B and each of the player has two strategies. The player A has strategy A1 and A2 and the player B has two strategies B1 and B2 and according to the conditions given in the table in the question uh, the payoff matrix can be written as 1 minus 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 and 0. See read the question carefully uh, according to this it says that A wins 1 unit of value when there are 2 heads, he wins nothing when there are 2 tails and loses 1, uh, 1 by 2 unit of value when there is 1 head and 1 tail. So, that is the reason why along with the 1 by 2 we have to write minus sign because it is a losing case. So, that is the way to write the payoff matrix and uh, now we need to make sure whether there is a saddle point or not. So, we will determine the saddle point as follows. We will find out the row min for each of the uh, rows and we find that the minimum of the first row is minus 1 by 2. Similarly, the minimum of the second row is also minus 1 by 2 and uh, therefore, we can say the max min is equal to minus 1 by 2. Then comes the column maximum. The first column maximum is 1 because we have 1 and minus 1 by 2 and for the second column we have uh, minus 1 by 2 and 0. So, there we have 0 uh, and since we want the minimum of 1 and 0. So, therefore, the minimum is 0 and since minus 1 by 2 is not equal to 0 therefore, there is no saddle point in this game. Now, let us look at the uh, case of the player A and let us assume that P 1 and P 2 are the probabilities of selecting the strategies A 1 and A 2 respectively of the player A. Then the expected gain to the player A when the player B uses its strategies B 1 and B 2 is given by the following equations P 1 plus minus 1 by 2 P 2 should be greater than or equal to V and similarly minus 1 by 2 times P 1 plus 0 times P 2 should be greater than or equal to V. And also we must have the condition that P 1 plus P 2 should be equal to 1 because they are the probabilities. Uh, I hope you have understood how did we get these equations. We got these equations by looking at the uh, coefficients that are given in the payoff matrix 1 minus 2 minus 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 0. All right. So, now uh, we will consider the first two inequalities as equations that is they are being satisfied exactly uh, equal to V 
and we have P 1 plus minus 1 by 2 P 2 is equal to V and similarly minus 1 by 2 times P 1 plus 0 times P 2 is equal to V. And when you solve this uh, from the second equation you can get P 1 is equal to minus 2 V and if you substitute this P 1 back into the first equation you will get P 2 is equal to minus 6 V. And uh, we have the third condition that is P 1 plus P 2 is equal to 1. So, therefore, we will substitute these values of P 1 and P 2 into this equation which will give us V is equal to minus 1 by 8. Therefore, uh, P 1 is equal to 0 0.25 and P 2 is equal to 0 0.75. So, this is the way we have solved uh, the for the player A we have got the values of P 1 and P 2. Now, consider the player B and let Q 1 and Q 2 be the probabilities of selecting strategy B 1 and B 2 respectively. Then the expected loss to the player B when the player A uses his strategies A 1 and A 2 can be written by the equations Q 1 plus minus 1 by 2 Q 2 should be less than or equal to 1 and similarly minus 1 by 2 Q 1 plus 0 times Q 2 less than or equal to 1. And again we must remember the conditions that Q 1 plus Q 2 should be equal to 1. Now, again in the same manner we will consider these inequalities as equations and we will get q 1 plus minus 1 by 2 q 2 is equal to v and similarly minus 1 by 2 q 1 plus 0 times q 2 is equal to v. This will give us q 1 is equal to 2 v and q 2 is equal to minus 6 v. Uh, the value of q 1 can be obtained from the second equation and uh, once we get this q 2 uh, once we get this q 1 we can substitute it in the first equation and we will get the value of q 2. And uh, finally, we will substitute both the values of q 1 and q 2 into the third equation that is q 1 plus q 2 is equal to 1 which will give us v is equal to minus 1 by 8. And uh, again we will put all these values into our q 1 and q 2 and we should get q 1 is equal to 0 0.25 and q 2 is equal to 0 0.75. Hence, what we have got? We have got the optimal strategies of the players A and B as follows. The optimal strategies of the player A are 0 0.25 and 0 0.75 and the optimum strategies of the player B are 0 0.25 and 0 0.75 and the value of the game is v is equal to minus 1 by 8. And uh, I would like to uh, uh, ask you to verify uh, this uh, result using the uh, oddments method that we did uh, in the previous lecture because remember this is a 2 by 2 situation. So, you can just verify that the results that you get using the odd man's method is also the same. So, now let us come to the second method, method number 2. In this method, we will model the problem using a linear programming problem. Uh, that is, we will model the problem using the uh, linear programming model and we will solve it using the simplex method. Now, the advantage of using this LPP approach is that it can be used to solve the mixed strategies game for large dimensions as well. Remember the drawback of the method number 1 that is the algebraic method is that it can solve only very small sized problems. However, when the problem size is large then uh, the first method that is the algebraic method might fail and here 
comes the second method that is the linear programming approach. So, let us look at a situation where we have a payoff matrix of the size m by n and let a i j be the elements of the ith row and the jth column of the payoff matrix and let p i be the probability of m strategies that is i is equal to 1 2 up to m for player a. Then the expected gains for player a for each of the player b's strategy can be written like this v is equal to p 1 a 1 j plus p 2 a 2 j plus p m a m j for all j going from 1 to up to n. Now, the aim of the player A is to select a set of strategies with the probabilities p i where i goes from 1 to up to m on any play of game such that he can maximize his minimum expected gains. This is what we have been doing uh, till now. Now, in order to obtain the probabilities, the value of the game to the player A for all strategies by player B must be at least equal to V. So, it is the other way around for B as compared to player A. Thus, to maximize the minimum expected gain, we must have the following conditions that is A 1 1 P 1 plus A 2 1 P 2 plus A M 1 P m should be greater than or equal to V and similarly A 1 2 P 1 plus A 2 2 P 2 plus A m 2 P m should be greater than or equal to V and uh, the last equation will be A 1 n P m P 1 plus A 2 n P 2 plus A m n P m should be greater than or equal to V and of course, the conditions that is p 1 plus p 2 plus p m should be equal to 1 and all the p i's should be greater than or equal to 0 where i goes from 1 to up to m. Now, dividing both sides of the m inequalities and the equation by v uh, division is valid as long as v is greater than 0. So, we can uh, take the liberty of dividing the inequalities by v. However, in case v is less than 0, the direction of the inequality constraints should be reversed and if v is equal to 0, then we can add a constant to all the entries of the matrix making sure that the value of the game v for the revised matrix becomes more than 0. So, I will be taking some examples to illustrate this situation. Now, after optimum solution is obtained, the value of the game is obtained by subtracting the same uh, quantity uh, from the entire results. Now, let us uh, replace uh, p i by v is equal to x i, uh, uh, this is the greater than equal to 0 uh, scenario and in this case all the variables are now replaced by p i by v. So, uh, the first variable x 1 is replaced by p 1 by v, x 2 is replaced by p 2 by v and like this. So, the entire uh, system of inequalities has been uh, changed by making this substitution and this uh, substitution has also to be done for the p 1 plus p 2 uh, I mean p 1 upon v plus p 2 upon v plus p m upon v is equal to 1. Now, since the objective of the player A is to maximize the value of the game v which is equivalent to minimizing of 1 upon v. Uh, therefore, the resulting linear programming problem can be stated as follows that is minimize 1 upon v is equal to 
x1 plus x2 plus xm subject to the constraints a11 x1 plus a21 x2 plus am1 x1 xm should be greater than or equal to 1 and like this uh, the last equation will be a1 n x1 a2 n x2 plus a m n x m greater than or equal to 1 and all the x1 x2 x m should be greater than or equal to 0 where x i is equal to p i upon v which is greater than or equal to 0. Now, remember that in a linear programming problem we must have all the decision variables greater than or equal to 0. Now, coming to the player B, the player B minimizes the expected loss because remember we have said that the player A is the maximizing player and the player B is the minimizing player. Since the minimization of V is equivalent to maximization of 1 upon V, so the LPP can be written as maximize 1 upon V which is equal to y1 plus y2 plus yn subject to a11 y1 plus a21 y1 y2 plus a2n yn less than or equal to 1 and similarly am1 y1 plus am2 y2 plus amn yn less than or equal to 1 and also the conditions y1 plus y2 sorry y1 comma y2 and y m they should be greater than or equal to 0 where each of the y j's should be equal to q j upon v greater than or equal to 0 where j goes from 1 to up to n. Now, you must have observed uh, a relationship between the L p for the player A and the L p for the player B. The L p for the player B is the dual of the L p of the player A and vice versa. This is a very important result uh, and it shows another very important application of the duality theory which we have studied in the previous lectures. Therefore, the solution of the dual problem can be obtained from the primal simplex table. Remember we have seen a result where from the optimum table of the primal we can actually derive the solution of the dual and vice versa. Now, since both for both the players the objective function value that is z p and z q they are both same remember the value of the game for the player A and the value of the game for the player B is always same. The expected gain to player A in the game will be exactly equal to the expected loss to the player B. So, this is also a very important consequence that is the uh, value of the game for both the players will be same. Uh, it uh, needs to be noted that the LP technique requires all the variables to be non-negative. Remember, they should be greater than or equal to 0 and therefore, to obtain a non-negative uh, value of V of the game, the data to be to the problem that is the Aij's in the payoff table should all be non-negative. Remember, in the first method we had uh, the payoff matrix uh, there was uh, some negative entries. In such uh, si type of situations we need to add a quantity so that all the entries in the payoff table become greater than or equal to 0. Uh, if there are some negative elements in the payoff table we must add a constant to every element in the payoff table so as to make the smallest element 0. Now, the solution to this new game will give an optimal mixed strategy for the original game, but the value of the original game equals the value of the new game minus the constant. So, we must make sure that whatever we have added has to be subtracted 
from the uh, results. So, now let us take a numerical example to illustrate how we can use the linear programming technique to uh, solve this game problem. Uh, transform the following payoff matrix of a two person zero sum game into an equivalent linear programming problem and solve it using the simplex method. Now, you can see that there are two players A and B both have three strategies each that is A1, A2, A3 and B1, B2, B3 and the payoff matrix is given by 1, minus 1, 3, 3, 5, minus 3, 6, 2 and minus 2. And as I said that moment you find any entry in the payoff matrix negative, you must make sure that it has to be removed by adding a constant such that all the entries they become 0 or greater than 0. So, in the solution to this problem first thing we find is that there is no saddle point in the game and once we have sure that now we can apply the mixed strategies therefore, we will add a constant to all the elements of the matrix. Now, in the payoff matrix what we find is that uh, we if we add 4 to all the entries a constant 4 to all the entries then as a result we get the following payoff matrix 5, 3, 7, 7, 9, 1, 10, 6 and 2. Now, you could have added 3 also that is not a problem if you had added 3 then uh, one of the entries would have become 0. Uh, that is also fine, but uh, in this case I have added the uh, constant 4. Now, all the entries in the payoff matrix have become greater than 0. Now, let us call the probabilities of uh, A 1, A 2, A 3 as P 1, P 2, P 3 and similarly the probabilities corresponding to the strategies B 1, B 2, B 3 as Q 1, Q 2, Q 3. So, let P i and Q i be the probabilities of selecting the strategies A i, i goes from 1 to 3 and B j where j goes from 1 to 3 by the two players A and B respectively. Then according to our uh, method the expected gain for the player A can be written as 5 P 1 plus 7 P 2 plus 10 P 3 which is greater than or equal to V. Uh, this comes if B uses strategy B 1 and similarly the second equation that is 3 P 1 plus 9 P 2 plus 6 P 3 greater than or equal to B V. Uh, this happens if B uses the strategy B 2 and the third equation is 7 P 1 plus P 2 plus 2 P 3 greater than or equal to V. This comes if B uses the strategy B 3. Of course, we must have the conditions P 1 plus P 2 plus P 3 should be equal to 1 and all P 1, P 2, P 3 should be greater than or equal to 0. Now, we will adopt our strategy by making this substitution as follows x 1 is equal to P 1 upon V x 2 is equal to p 2 upon v and x 3 is equal to p 3 upon v and the problem for the player a will become minimize z b is equal to uh, which is equal to 1 upon v is equal to x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 subject to the constraints 5 x 1 plus 7 x 2 plus 10 x 3 greater than or equal to 1 3 x 1 plus 9 x 2 plus 6 x 3 greater than or equal to 1, 7 x 1 plus x 2 plus 2 x 3 greater than or equal to 1 and all the 3 variables x 1, x 2, x 3 greater than or equal to 0. Now, similarly for the player B we will have the corresponding problem as maximize z q is equal to 1 upon v 
which is equal to v 1 plus v 2 plus v 3 which is subject to 5 y 1 plus 3 y 2 plus 7 y 3 less than or equal to 1 7 y 1 plus 9 y 2 plus y 3 less than equal to 1 10 y 1 plus 6 y 2 plus 2 y 3 less than or equal to 1 all the y 1 y 2 y 3 greater than or equal to 0 and we have remember made the substitution that y 1 is equal to q 1 upon v y 2 is equal to q 2 upon v and y 3 is equal to q 3 upon v. So, the problem of player b uh, turns out to be maximize y 1 plus y 2 plus y 3. Now, we are converting this uh, uh, inequalities over here in this uh, L p corresponding to the player b. Uh, we have less than constraints. So, remember we can add the slack variables to make this uh, less than equal to constraint as equality constraint. Uh, we remember that if we do it for the player a, uh, we will not be able to do it properly because there we have the greater than equal to constraints and we will need to subtract the surplus variable uh, and then we will not have a BFS. So, we will need some artificial variables. So, therefore, it is much more convenient to look at the less than equal to constraints corresponding to the player b and we can simply add the slack variables uh, into each of these equations uh, as shown here in these equations. And of course, uh, they have 0 coefficients in the objective function and of course, as you know that the slack variables should also be greater than or equal to 0. So, now we have a resulting 6 variable problem uh, which we can solve using the simplex procedure. Uh, I will omit the proof uh, and the detailed solution, uh, but the solution that I obtained uh, for this uh, 6 variable problem is shown here in this table and uh, you can use this table uh, to get the results corresponding to the player b and as I told you that the player uh, the, the L p corresponding to the player a and the L p corresponding to the player b are the dual of each other. So, therefore, from the optimum table of this uh, problem corresponding to the player b, uh, you can get the uh, solution of the dual uh, which is corresponding to the solution of the player a. So, we find that the optimum solution for the player b is y 1 is equal to 0, y 2 is equal to 1 by 10, y 3 is equal to 1 by 10 and the expected value of the game or rather the objective function is equal to 1 upon v minus the constant which we actually had uh, uh, used to make all the elements uh, as positive. We had added uh, this constant 4 into all the elements of the payoff matrix. So, we get the value of z is equal to 5 minus 4 which is equal to 1 and now we will want to convert this uh, into the original variables. Remember the original variables were the pi's and the qi's. So, in this case for the player b we have to convert all the variables that is the v y i variables as q i's. So, uh, if 1 upon v is equal to 1 upon 5 then v is equal to 5 and also y 1 is equal to q 1 upon v this implies uh, q 1 is equal to 0. Similarly, y 2 is equal to q 2 upon v which means that q 2 y 2 into v is equal to 1 by 10 into 5 which is equal to 1 by 2 and similarly y 3 is equal to q 3 upon v which is e which means q 3 is equal to y 3 times v which is equal to 1 by 10 into 5 which is equal to 1 by uh, 2. So, what we have done is we have converted the y 1 y 2 variables of the dual which was corresponding to the player b back into the q i's where q i's were the probabilities corresponding to the strategies of b. So, the optimum strategies of the player a 
Now, let us come to the op optimal strategies of the player A, this can be derived as I said these are the dual. So, the dual variables can also be read the solution from the optimum table of the, uh, the from the primal. So, the values of x 1 will be equal to 2 by 15, x 2 is equal to 1 by 15 and x 3 is equal to 0. And then converting back into the probabilities p 1, p 2, we can write p 1 is equal to x 1 v which is equal to uh, 2 by 15 times 5 which is equal to 2 by 3 and similarly p 2 is equal to x 2 times v which is equal to 1 by 15 times 5 which is equal to 1 by 3 and p 3 is equal to x 3 times v which is equal to 0. Hence, uh, the probabilities of using the strategies by both the players are as follows. Player A has the strategies 2 by 3, 1 by 3 and 0 and player B has the strategies 0, 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 and the value of the game is equal to 5. So, with this we come to an end of the uh, topic on uh, game theory and uh, uh, before I close I would like to mention some of the uh, general type of strategic games. Uh, the prisoners dilemma, the arms race, the bash and uh, Stravinsky, the matching uh, pennies, the stage hunt and many more. So, those of you who are interested in this uh, part of the operation research that is the game theory, you can read about these uh, strategic games in details. So, in the uh, next lecture, I will give you some exercises and some uh, quiz questions. So, with that, I will close this lecture. Thank you.